Greetings, Three Mile Cross Church, from uh, myself and my dad. We just uh, come to take this opportunity to use the church cameras to come uh, put out a special challenge to us all um, in light of all that's going on uh, in our country at the moment. And uh, particularly with the big news, of course, as we know with this lockdown, um, that churches are allowed to stay open. And um, so that's a wonderful opportunity for us. And it's, it's with that that we've obviously been uh, praying and just uh, seeking the Lord and, and, and really felt the burden of God to, to, to use this time to, to pray. So this is, what it is. this is all really a call to prayer for us as a church. And um, so we want to just put the challenge out there. I mean, the thing is, as you know, we've been looking at uh, um, Daniel's prophecies and the end time things, but particularly the very important prayer that Daniel prayed uh, uh, before, when he realized that they're coming to the end of the captivity. And, uh, and I remember this, the, the burden that, uh, of the Lord on me that day as I was uh, bringing that message that now is the time for us to pray like never before. And uh, so that's why we want to come to you today, just to put the challenge out there, because we want to take this coming Sunday, um, first Sunday of this third national lockdown, um, to take time to pray. Um, so we're asking you to come together as a church on Sunday morning. Uh, so that we can spend time in prayer, much like it is in, in, in 2 Chronicles 7.14, if my people, remember that famous verse. And uh, so we want to do that on Sunday morning. Um, but we also want to just remind all of us as well, you know, how important this time is and how crucial it is. And, and many of you probably know people that are affected with this virus and, and all that. So we want to continue to pray for them and also just to urge us all as a church to, to you know, to be, to be um, what's the word, wise in how we go about it. So be really careful, uh, you know, just to obey the rules, make sure when we come, we do the right thing. Uh, again, we just remind you book in, so we know we can put the chairs out and all that. But, um, but we really just want to share with you. And I'm going to ask my dad just to share with us a little bit what the Lord's laid on his heart as well. And, and so encourage us to come together to pray on Sunday morning. Well, hello to you all. Um, it uh, was good news, you know, when we first saw the announcement of the lockdown, which we all probably anticipated. Um, our first thoughts were, well, that's it, places of worship will be closed again. Uh, and it was only about an hour or so later we realized that actually this time, no, they've, they've, they've decided to leave the places of worship open. And initially, and our thoughts were, oh, dear, what do we do with this now? Because, you know, with, with the uh, infection rate as high as it is now and, I'm sure every one of you know someone or, or maybe even have been affected by yourself by this virus. A lot of people, even at my work, a lot of guys have been affected by it. So what do we do? And immediately it was just after that, I just felt the Lord impress upon my heart that there's a reason why they've done that. And I believe and I, and I trust in my heart that they have decided to leave the places of worship open for one reason. And that is in the hope that we will call unto our God to help him, although they don't voice it in any way. I do believe that in their heart they are so desperate at the moment that they've, in their, hopefully in their wisdom, decided that the one place we probably do need to keep open is a place of worship and trust the people that go there that they will earnestly seek the face of God, as Dion quoted the scripture in Second Chronicles, that if my people will pray, humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, that I will hear them and heal their land. And I believe that's what they want us to do. So we have an opportunity, and I believe it's now the time for us as a church to step up and stand in the gap. And uh, just to come forward and really intercede this time for our nation, for our people, uh, for, and for people throughout all the world, for those who are suffering and uh, those who are having a hard time. I just really felt that burden upon my heart as if this is an opportunity that God has given us. And it's now the time for us as the church to step up and pray. But then how do we do it? How do we stay safe? How do we uh, still gather and be safe? Well, the first thing is we don't fear. We know that. We trust God to keep us safe. And we know Psalm 92 very well, Psalm 91, where it says, you know, those who abide under the shadow of the Almighty will, uh, will be safe. And it tells us that even if thousands fall on our sides, it won't affect us. But then we have to abide under the shadow of the Almighty, and we have to be obedient to God's Word and what He tells us to do, just like the example of the saints throughout the ages. And I just wanted to read this in, in, in Romans 13, which I've shared with you before. 
And this is what God says. He says, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except for God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God, whether we like them or not. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God. And those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. And that's why it's important that we obey what the government has laid out to do. So we obey our social distancing, we obey by wearing our masks, and we obey to do what God, what the government said we do, because that's what the Word of God says, that we should not resist those authorities, because they put there by God. And if we do, we then abide under the shadow of Almighty and we will be safe. That's the safest way to do it. And then just this one scripture, just a little bit further down in Romans 13, verse 11, it says this, and do this knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believe. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. So this is the call for us to come and to pray and stand in the gap. Thanks, dear. Amen. And uh, so that's uh, the call for each of us. And I, I pray that you'd respond. So that for those of you that want to come in the morning, um, again, you know, be sure you book in. Uh, but for all of you at home as well, you know, be sure that you are in prayer. This is, this is really why we, we want to send this out now, so that you, 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 you join us on Sunday, having already been praying and in the Spirit. And, uh, you know, we, we absolutely believe this is a crucial time. And, and that following verse in Second Chronicles seven fourteen, you know, it, it's the bit we know, if, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. And he says, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayer made in this place. And uh, so that's what we want to see on Sunday morning. So, friends, we just want to challenge you. Please take some time to pray uh, between now and, and, and Sunday morning. And, and then do join us um, as we really take some uh, time to be serious before our almighty God, because our nation certainly needs it. <laughs>